Hey girls, I want to show you how you can be working on requirement number two for the Explorer Photography Badge at home. So you, uh, we need to discover two photo editing platforms and these are the two I'm going to show you. Canva.com slash photo editor and photop.com. And then there's certain techniques that you need to do. There's four of them uh, that you need to do and you're supposed to edit at least five photos. And I'm going to show you another technique of cropping and straightening, which you might need to do on some of your photos. For the five photos, you can use some of the sample ones that I've provided, or you can also take your own photos and then edit those as well. So the first thing I'll show you is canva.com slash photo editor, and you'll click on upload your image, and then it'll ask you where you want to find it on your computer. And once you've loaded it, this is what it'll look like. Now, in my case, before I do any editing of the image, I want to crop and rotate this thing because look at how crooked the horizon is. So I go up and click on crop. And now I have a couple options. First of all, I'll start at the bottom. Do you see that rotate button? I'm going to click and drag this. And as I drag it, it rotates my image and I'm going to use those white guides until it looks about straight. Now you're also in the cropping method and cropping usually is on the, at the corners. So click on, you see how I can click on this corner and I can make it any shape I want. We'll fix the, get the right shape. So I'm getting rid of this. I don't want this area here and I don't want this part of the dashboard. So I'm gonna crop until I don't see the stuff I don't want. And I actually don't want that much road either. And so I'm gonna get rid of some of that other sky and a little bit of the road. Um, and now I'll say I am done. Now my picture is too small for the background so I can use these corner things to pull it bigger and you always use the corner ones because these top and bottom the ones on the sides will crop it. Actually I want to pull this thing down so I'm going to pull it downwards and now I can uncrop so I can expose more of my picture that I had cut off. So that is how you straighten and crop um, using this crop button. Um, next, let's look at editing the image. Now, this one, there's no black and white button per se, but you could take, look for saturation. Saturation is how much color. So if you put the saturation all the way down, it's black and white, which is, kind of pointless for a sunset. So what we could do though is turn the saturation up a little bit and get those sunset colors even brighter. If you go too bright, then it starts to look really fake. So just find something that's bright but not too, uh, more saturated but not too much. Brightness is something different. Brightness is going to make it look more daytime. I want it look at looking more like dusk so I'm going to actually decrease the brightness and then there's also contrast as well that changes um, how strong the difference between the colors is and so you might want to pop the contrast up a little bit as well so you're going to play around with these three sliders until you like the way your image looks and you can try the other sliders as well of course now in Canva it's quite easy to add text you click on the text button you can either add a text box that just plops something on there and you can type it. If I don't want that, I'm just going to hit delete. Or you can even try something that already exists. For example, this one here. And I'm going to double click on that and then I can start typing whatever I want. Now, once you have this, if I double click all of this or if I click away and just click one time on the text, you can also change the font up here. There's lots and lots and lots of ones to choose from. You can change the size here or by dragging on these corners. Um, you can also change the color of your text. And this is fun. I'll show you this real quick. In, in Canva, it always shows you some, some default colors, so I could change that to pink. Um, but it also allows you to add a new color that's not included yet. And you can pick any color from here. You can move this thing over. But this is a really cool thing. If you click on this color picker, you can click anywhere, actually anywhere on the entire screen. 
but I'm going to click on this yellow down here in the sunset and now it, I know it matches my yellow perfectly. And then here there's a fun, some fun things you can try with effects. I have the neon on and that makes it like a neon sign where you can change the intensity. You can do outline, you can change the outline and the thickness, the color. I mean, there's so much you can do. You can add a shadow, etc., etc. So just play around, find something you like for the text. And then what about adding a border or a frame? That's done under elements. And so elements, you, you can see all the different types of elements that are here. For example, squares, logos, stars, there's shapes, there's graphics, there's stickers. Um, I want borders though, so I'm gonna go up here and type in border and hit enter. And then it shows me all sorts of borders. I'm gonna stick with the graphic ones and I wanna see more than these options. So I'm gonna say see all. And then you can see lots and lots of options and scroll and scroll and see more. Now notice these ones that have the crowns, those are paid, you have to pay to use those. But if you can, you can find other ones that don't have crowns. For example, this one here, I can pop that up to the top here, a nice little border at the top. If I want it bigger, I can grab it bigger. I can make it smaller. Some of these, Depending on what kind of border it is, you can even change the color here. So remember this color tool picker? I could click on here. I could pick one of these yellow colors again. It didn't change it much. Here, let's pick this color here. And now it's the same color as this thing right there. So maybe I even want to put it on this side. And... Um, I could, now it's the wrong direction, so I can go to flip, and I can uh, flip it horizontally, so now it's the right direction. Okay, so there's lots of fun things you can do. Whatever you want to work on, click on it so that it's selected, and then you can edit image, or in this case, you can click, you know, you can change the text. So play around with it. Canva is a lot of fun. Eventually I got mine to look like this. I added a Bible verse on there. I added this border at the bottom. Fun things you can do. All right. So let's look at photo P instead. Now this one, you're going to go to open from computer and then you will get the same. I'm going to use that same picture. Now here, Everything is, a, you have a lot more options than in Canva, but everything is a little harder. Now, if you you start on this move tool and I, you want to have transform controls on, um, cropping, you can do cropping and rotating. You notice how if I'm on moving and I'm at the border, I see I have this kind of the same type that I had in Canva. So this part is similar. The cropping is a different tool. There's this crop tool, and I can use that. Oh, sorry, I forgot to use my confirm. <laughs> I'm still in Canva thinking, so I need to confirm that. Now if I go to crop tool, and if I start to change this, um, I can change it, but you notice how it's giving me all sorts of shapes and I want it to stay the same shape. So I'll choose original ratio. And now when I change it, whoops, let me go right on that. I can, I can fiddle around by cha uh, clicking on the corners or dragging on the square itself until I have the part of the image I want. And then again, I go up to the check mark and say confirm. Now, what about hue and saturation and brightness? In Canva, it was right there under edit image. In this case, I need to go to my move tool. I have my image selected. Now I see how these things popped up. I go to image, adjustments. Now notice that first, this one does have a black and white option. I click on that and it gives me an entire dialog box where I can change these sliders um, to get different kinds of black and white. Like, okay, that, that made the red really, really bright. And there's a lot of red in this because it was a sunset. I'm going to reset that. I don't want that. In fact, I don't want black and white at all because this is a sunset, but it might be really nice. Black and white could be really nice for portraits or for, for maybe even some nature shots. It can be really powerful, but not in this case. 
But if I want to do brightness and saturation and, and contrast, remember those are the what I did in, in, in Canva. They were all in one place. Here, they're in two different places. Oh, let me go back there. Image, adjustment. So once you go to one or the other, then you get these slider bars again. So I can put my brightness down like I did in Canva, and I can put my contrast up. All right, but since I can't do saturation at the same time, it's a little bit harder. Now, a lot harder is text. I go here to this T, I can start typing. If I click on here and I can start typing something, um, I'm not even going to show you much more than this, though. I mean, I'll go back to my move tool. It's just a lot harder to work with text in Photop. It can be done. It's just harder. So I would do text in Canva. Um, same thing with the border. There's no elements thing where I can just pick all kinds of fun borders pre-made. I could make one with the rectangle tool, but again, it's a lot harder. So why would people use Photop? So this is where I've done a little bit more work. I did get some nice text. I did get a fun little border. But this is why you might want to use Photop because all these other things it can do. For example, this thing called the spot healing brush. Notice all of these these, this, there's a billboard here, there's signs, there's light poles, there's a cell tower. It kind of messes up the picture of my sky. In Canva, there's not much you can do. But with this um, spot healing brush, I can click on that. And now if I click and drag, oh, I need to make sure. I'm in the right layer. So I'm going to go on this background layer. Um, and now if I click and drag on this um, pole and let go, and then it does a little bit of work behind the scenes. And my computer's really slow. Sorry, guys. It's had enough for tonight. Um, oh, now it's not doing anything. Now I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. See how it just removed that? and kind of blended it in and made it look like it's just sky. Um, so if you do that on all of them, let me see what happened to my cursor. Sorry, it's really slow right now. I'll try to move slowly. And if I turn on this other layer I made, and then you'll see all of them are gone. Even the billboard, even the roadsides, it doesn't even look like anything that was there, was it? Now, I did try that with the cars as well. There would be a way to get rid of the cars, but you're going to have to use a different tool because the spot healer made it look like there was some kind of earthquake on the road. So there are some cool things you can do with Photop, but text and borders is not one of them. So, and it is a lot more complex. So, but now you've seen two online versions and you can try it out for yourself. Have fun.